Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, before we get underway, I have a few administrative uh, announcements. Um, welcome to the September meeting of the Irondequoit Zoning Board of Appeals. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, the fire exit is located to your left. In the event of a fire, you will be notified by an announcement. If so, notified. Please move in a calm and orderly direction. Uh, use either the north or the south stairs to exit the building. Uh, not the elevators. The, our meetings are recorded by our secretary, Michelle, for the purpose of a record and, and minutes, not as a verbatim transcript, in order to help her keep things straight. When you come to the podium, please identify yourself each time that you come to the podium, if you come more than once, and speak clearly into the microphone. We uh, follow the cases in the order in which they appear on the agenda. There are extra copies of the agenda on the table near the door. The way that we work it here is as follows. We call the, after the case has been called, the applicant or their representative should come to the podium, identify themselves, state their address, then raise their right hands to be sworn, and then present their case. During the presentation of the case, the members of the board will have an opportunity to question or engage in discussion with the applicant. Uh, and once that process has been concluded, then the case will be open to the public for input. Uh, we have three categories of public input that we've identified over the, the years that I've been on the board. The first is those who wish to speak in favor of the application. And then we open the floor to those who wish to speak in opposition to the application. And then we open the floor to those who aren't sure whether they're in favor or opposed to the application, but want to talk to us about something that has something to do with the application. After we conclude all of the public input portion, then we give the applicant or their representative the opportunity to return to the podium and address anything that uh, came up during the uh, public input portion of the meeting. During the public input portion, the comments are to be directed to the board and not to the applicant. Uh, once the process has been concluded, we'll end the case for that case and move on to the next case until we get to the last case. Once we get to the last case and conclude that, the board will take a short break. And then uh, once we return, we will deliberate and make decisions on the cases that have been presented to us in the order in which they appear on the uh, agenda and for which the applicant or the representative are still present. So if the first applicant has left and the second applicant is still in the room, we would take the second case first. And we will take the cases in order that the applicants are still present. And then we'll go back to the top of the agenda and take them uh, in the order of those who have left. Uh, you're not required to stay for the deliberation portion. Um, if you do, however, it's important to note that unless requested by the board, that's not an opportunity for uh, engaging in any further conversation uh, with the board or the applicant. Uh, at once, uh, um, if you do leave, you're certainly welcome to uh, call tomorrow morning, and they'll be glad to tell you what decisions we reached. Or if you get home in time, I think it's 1301 now that we're on. We're brought. 1303, beaming live into your living room uh, or other place where your TV is hooked up to the cable. So, having said that, oh, tonight uh, we welcome Charlesy. I'm sorry, you? Pickett. Pickett. She is the uh, alternate member. Uh, Mr. Upson couldn't be with us tonight, and she will be here next month because I will not be here next month. So, welcome to the board. Thanks for having me over. Our pleasure. I think that concludes all the preliminary stuff, and we could start doing business. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First item on the agenda is case number ZB1909-1. Upon the matter of request by jo Joseph Palladino for area variances, 
to construct a new single family two story dwelling with less than required <coughs> rear setback and exceeding maximum permitted lot coverage and height on premises 489 Rock Beach Road in an R2 residential district. Good evening. Uh, Joseph Palladino, 3 Delta Terrace. April Palladino, 3 Delta Terrace. If you raise your right hands, do you swear or affirm that everything you say tonight will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, thank you. Um, well, as previously <coughs> stated, um, we are looking to construct a new uh, single-family residence at 49 Rock Beach Road with um, exceptions to the rear setback, the maximum per permitted lot coverage, and the permitted height. Um, we are lifelong Ronaquite residents, or actually I'm a lifelong Ronaquite residence, resident. I'm a fourth generation resident. Uh, my family intends to live in this home, stay in Ronaquite, raise our family here. Um, as I noted in my submission, um, the requests that we're making do not uh, conflict with the character of the neighborhood and they are consistent with the existing nature of the surrounding residences and they will not result in a any hardship to the neighboring properties and we also considered whether the request was substantial and the amount of variance variances requested as outlined in more detail in my submission are uh, minimal and they are likely to not result in any hardship to the neighbors. I'm open for any questions. I'm, I'm sure you guys have read the, my submission and I am uh, open for any questions by the board. We'll have some. <laughs> Don't worry. Sure you, sure you will. <laughs> You looked like you were going to go first. So. Go All right. As I understand it, the uh, rear setback that you're looking for is to basically accommodate that little bump out at, yes. at, the, at the back. And that the front setback that you considered, you're not asking for. You've gone back to the woods. Yes, it was just an alternative. And we decided to go with the, with the rear setback because, it, like you said, it's only the the bump out and it also would allow us to have a longer driveway in the future which I think is is important um, obviously and um, in terms of the lot coverage if you were to uh, stay within the lot coverage requirements you'd have a, a large dollhouse uh, is basically it right yes if, if we stay within the coverage we'd essentially really not the house wouldn't be large enough to accommodate the needs and our need to build a new home presently. Um, it really wouldn't be much of a difference in the house we live in and it really would defeat the purpose as far as the needs of our growing family essentially. And the height is to accommodate the height variances for? Well, the issue with the height is we have searched um, considerably to find both a lot in Ironicoite. And as you know, there's not a lot of empty areas within the town. And ultimately, we did find a lot. And we have we searched for a long time trying to find a, a plan which would both accommodate the size we need as well as the, the, um, the, the challenges of building on a small lot. And a lot of the homes and the architects I've spoken with are essentially, as you can see on our plan, very narrow plans and the height is needed to create space in the home and or at least the illusion of space oh yeah exactly and that's that's where we're at that's why we're having the height issue and um it's just basically the challenge the challenges the, the lot does pose a lot of challenges but i think we in searching we're able to find something that does meet our needs and hopefully not affect the surrounding neighbors I was just going to make a comment that the uh, the overall plan that we have in front of us, it's it's a matter of the pitch on the roof. 
um, being aesthetically pleasing to, to the eye. And in, in my opinion, um, you know, the, the way most of the modern houses are built, they're built with a tall pitch. Um, in, in our area, that helps with the snow runoff and rain runoff. Uh, but it also, um, it seems like most builders nowadays are utilizing the, the tall pitch for aesthetics also. So I, I think it's a, a very handsome looking um, layout and, and, a, and very eye appealing. That's just personal. And I don't believe, you know, again, my opinion, the overall height variance is substantial. You're looking for an extra four feet and that would be basically toward the peak, which is not the whole roof. It's just the center section of the roof. So um, I don't think it's considered uh, substantial. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments from the board? Okay. Seeing none, we'll open it to public input. <clears throat> Thank you. First category, as I said, is those if there's anyone here who wishes to speak in favor of the application, step right up to the microphone. If there's anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the application, this is your time to step up to the microphone. Anyone who'd like to talk to us about height, lock, light requirements, whatever, uh, you're welcome to step up to the microphone. Seeing none, we'll close the hearing with respect to this case. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is case number ZB1909-2. Upon the matter of request by Premier Sign Systems, acting as agent for United Refining Quickfill for area variances to install placement signage in new location on premises 1862 Hudson Avenue in an R1 residential district. <coughs> Laura Baranis from Premier Sign, representing United Refining. You swear or affirm that everything you say tonight will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Okay. Um, we recently went in and got a permit for um, wrapping the gas canopy. Um, as you see on there, we, we're doing it all over. They're trying to clean up all the gas stations and make them look nice. We just recently did the one up on Ridge Road East. And um, nice. Thank you. We... Um, wanted to put a pole sign in with the gas pricers in it, the electronic gas pricers. But we just felt really with that lot the way it is, there really wasn't a good spot for it. So uh, we decided to get rid of that horrible pole sign up on top of the gas canopy. That's going. And so they asked if we could actually put a gas pricer on each end of the gas canopy that would just show the their price for the gas for the unleaded mm -hmm. so it can be electronically changed. Mm -hmm. They don't flash, they don't change. The only time they change actually is when the gas price changes. That's what they're looking for, one on each side. So, All right. Given current conditions, I like the 246 that you've put on the sign. <laughs> as long as you keep it there, that would work really well. Yeah. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Although it says 253 on the first row. So. Well, I did want to also let you know that uh, the manager went down at least three to four houses on each side and asked the neighbors, showed the neighbors if there was anybody that had an issue with it. Nobody had an issue with it. Everybody was fine. He even went across the street, which is a, a business over there. Dental office. Yes, and asked them, and they were fine with it. Um, the only thing that they questioned was the time of the gas delivery. So... Corporate said that they would work that out with them. The one guy had said he preferred delivered a little earlier in the day than when it was being delivered. So they said that's not a problem. They would take care of that. Um, everybody else was fine with it. And then I did go around, not around, but I went on to Google, and there are quite a few of the gas pricers at the stations, but they're all on pole signs that I see um, that I could find. I noticed the one on uh, Ridge Road West has already been done, and it's got the new sign the way you want it, the new canopy and the new... Uh, oh, the one out in Greece? Yeah. Yeah, I did. That was like one of the first ones I ever did. That's yeah, a really that nice looks, station. That looks good. Yeah, yeah, the towns, honestly, the towns have been really happy with the wraps that we've been putting on them. They just said it, it 
cleans up the black. It makes it look really nice, and it does. You know, it's it's appealing. It's a it's a modern look to it. It is, yeah. Compared to what's there right now, it's just Lots. most of them, yeah. Any other questions or comments? We'll open it up to the public input. Is there anyone who'd like to speak in favor of this application? Anyone who'd like to speak in opposition to this application? Anyone who'd like to talk to us about signage, wraparound, gas prices, delivery times, anything like that? Seeing, hmm? Gas prices? Okay. <laughs> Seeing none, we'll close the hearing with respect to this matter. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is case number ZB1909-3. Upon the matter of request by Seafood, Seafood Harbor LLC for area variances to install a second freestanding sign exceeding maximum number of freestanding signs and square footage on premises 850 East Ridge Road in a C business district. It's Fan Zen, Seafood Harbor LLC. So we try to, we do Hold have on. Did uh, you put your names and address on the record yet? My name? Yes, your name and address. Oh, the address too, I'm sorry. Yes. 850 East Rage Row. Okay. So his name too? Raise your right hands to you, well, both of you. Okay. Do you swear or affirm that everything you say tonight will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, we try to put a, we do have a post sign right now for the Seafood Harbor, but we try to put another sign like a, we actually do attach to the building, but it looks like a stand alone. We have, um, the reason we want to put this in is just, uh, it looks uh, more like the whole piece of the artwork instead of just a sign. We try to create a, it's like a look like a pier. It's, uh, you guys, if you do have the pictures, so it well shows like this, uh, like a small fishing village with uh, all the drawing with the building. So now we think uh, it's it, it does have the seafood harbor restaurant and bar in there, but it's more like a like an art piece than a sign itself. And if the restaurant and bar it do bothers, so we can remove the restaurant and bar just have the seafood harbor in there. If that's the case. I have one question. There's yeah. a sign currently on the peak of the building um, from the old restaurant. Oh, we removed that. It, we it no longer use that. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Is the sign going to be lit? Uh, the sign itself is not lit. We might put a lighting next to it to Light point at, it. Yeah, points yeah. at the sign. We actually have the artist to draw this whole sign to put on. So we haven't have things done. So if the restaurant and bar, you don't get don't like this, we can remove that. Just put a seafood harbor on it. Isn't the name of the isn't Seafood Harbor Restaurant and Bar the name of? The yeah, that's business? the name of the restaurant. Yes. Okay, so I don't. I don't think any of us have any problem with you putting the name of your business on. <laughs> um, restaurants and bars. Thank people you. look for those. So yeah. yeah thank sometimes. you. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments from the board? Yeah, I do. Uh, what will be your signature dish? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the radio ad. <laughs> All right, uh, is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? Anyone who'd like to talk to us about signs or seafood? <laughs> Seeing none, we'll close the hearing with respect to this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll make a motion that we remove case number ZB1908-5 from the table. I'll second. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries seven votes in favor. No opposed, no abstentions. The board is fully constituted tonight. I, this is an item for board action. It was a tabled item, case number ZB1908-5. Upon the matter of request by KC Rodriguez for an area variance to continue parking a non-conforming commercial vehicle on premises 99 Summershire Drive in an R1 residential district. Good evening, board. KC Rodriguez, 99 Summershire. You swear or affirm that everything you say tonight will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Absolutely. I think when we were last here in August, you were going to <clears throat> look into seeing if there was any other arrangement that could be made for storage of the food truck, right? That is correct. And so I'm going to start that? with a couple that you guys had mentioned to me, just some off the top that you guys had talked about. CubeSmart was one that was brought up. So CubeSmart called them, discussed, because they have an overhang for vehicles. Um, I need to add here that I'm a, my own commissary, so this kind of makes my situation a bit different. So within the truck, you are your own commissary when you have a three-bay sink and you have refrigeration to hold your perishable food to keep it safe for consumption. With that being said, I call, let them know, hey, do you have a space? They allow no like non-perishables, like you can't have anything like that on premises. So then I'm on to U-Haul. So U-Haul has the same rule as does almost every storage unit under the known to man. They don't allow you to have anything perishable on premises. They won't be um, responsible for it. So if we take those off the table, then I just look for something where I need to be able to plug in. So when I say plug in, my truck is electrocuted, outfitted for a certain amount of amps to keep everything running and cold. And so when I pull into my driveway behind my fence and close my doors, I plug into my garage, and that keeps everything cold. You have to stay at 45 <coughs> degrees Fahrenheit or below to keep your food safe for consumption. So I then, looking for someone to allow me to park, almost like you would at a KOA or something of, of that nature. That is almost impossible. So then I'm on to the next adventure of looking for a commissary. Even though I am my own commissary, I'm now looking for someone almost like a standalone restaurant that would allow me to pull in and park and either bring my stuff into their establishment and put it in their refrigerators or so on and so forth. That is also, that's people turn their heads when you say that to a business owner. They're like, now why would we let you come into our place and bring something in and you go to switching something over from your truck to our food establishment, the cross-contamination comes into play as well as being an issue of the word I'm looking for is missing me but anyways so that was out of the question so then I go on to looking for a place that I can rent myself so I start at the Tim Hortons right off Hudson that's um, beside the place where you get your oil change Jiffy Lube. yes so there's or a no, Tim I Hortons guess it's there Valvoline. It used to be Jiffy Lube. yes and so try that that's about 55 53 to 5500 hundred dollars a month that is astronomical, like I cannot afford that. So then I'm on to the steakhouse in behind the Popeye's um, chicken place, and that place was at like $9,300 a month. So then I'm on to look for a small cafe, maybe somewhere that would be open, almost like something like the Bagels, etc., within the um, Wegmans Plaza. That is also very difficult to find. So I come up with nothing. So then I'm on to speak to my board of advisors at SCORE, and I'm like, what do I do? I have no idea what's next. So I come to you now, and I can pass these around to each of you if you'd like. It's a packet full of just a bunch of information. Would you guys like to have them? Sure. sure we'll make it a part of the record. Seven and eight. This should kind of explain the highlights of information that I'm, speak that I'm speaking about, as well as giving you the next information that I will cover. So I did explain the fact that I am my own commissary. I also explained the fact that I did go through the steps of trying to find another place. And I would like to say that now I'm hopefully 
making it very clear that I feel as though I'm at a place of undue hardship, which is defined as an action requiring significant difficulty or expense. Because you guys also had mentioned, could you expand your garage? To expand a garage is thousands and thousands of dollars. And I don't have that. And if I did, I would put it into my truck rather than my garage. Um, so when I say that the action requiring significant difficulty or expense, the difficulties come when we talk about um, safety and the safety of food consumption. So to keep my food safe to where that there is no cross-contamination, there is no breakdown in um, communication or someone else is touching or has co contact with the food, I need to have all of the things such as you'll see at the very top of my paper it talks about our fire system. So with a fire suppression system it cannot become below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And if it does, then the whole system is shot. That can be anywhere from four to $600 to re-trigger um, that system every time this happens. So I have to be able to plug my truck in to keep my food cold. I have to be able to have a heater in there to keep um, my fire suppression safe. And that is a way to keep my food and my truck completely running and safe. So we talk about water supply outside of the fire suppression system. I get my potable water from my house. It comes from the garden hose that goes in through the system and it's heated with the truck, with a, um, a water heater with, that is on the truck. So water is a problem, the fire is a problem, the fire safety system is a problem, and then protection for safe food consumption is an issue. So I'm trying to present to you guys that this is going to shut my doors. And I want to serve safe food to the community. I am here because I wanted to be a important part of the community. And if I cannot park it in my driveway and plug it in and keep the food safe, my doors will shut before I'm even able to open it. Now, my recollection of your presentation last month was that you indicated that the food truck basically is operational between like April and November. Yes, that is correct. Okay. So then I thought, like I had presented to you guys, that I could be like a seasonal, kind of like the boats and the RVs. So I take it over to Four Horse Customs. I'm not sure if any of you know what that is, but Four Horse Customs is um, a place here that redo, redoes food trucks inside out, builds them. I think I read about them in the newspaper about a year ago. Okay. So those gentlemen, three of them, two of those guys are veterans. Um, I myself am a veteran. I'm sure you guys remember that. And so they are giving me all the information, and they said, you do realize if you put this truck somewhere, you're going to have to shut this entire fire suppression system down and pull your bottle. You will not be able to do anything that you're trying to do throughout the winter, which is serve at all, even if you wanted to serve, because I wanted to do a meal prep situation where the, if you have any gym heads in here, someone who does meal prep, you can pick up on Sunday and you get five sets of meals or whatever you so choose, and that's it. I won't be able to do that because my truck is no longer operational because I don't have a fire suppression system because the bottle, everything is taken out at that point because it can't get below that 32 degrees. And as you know, it gets mighty cold here. So I'm at this point where I'm just, I really have nothing else. And the water, the pipes in the place, and they can't freeze, they can't bust. Then I don't have clean potable water to clean my dishes, to wash my hands, to clean my vegetables and so on and so forth. And so... I'm really kind of at a place of my business mentors were like, are you prepared to pivot? <laughs> no, I'm not. This is very detrimental to my business. This is not as simple as like, I have tools in my truck and it can't sit in my driveway. This is everything. So I don't know how else or what else. And also within the packets are each section, each code, each everything that I have to have and follow to be properly outfitted to serve the community and the regulations that you've attached are from the health department yes New York that is State. correct for Mo well that's monroe county monroe county yes that's monroe county i don't know if it goes as far as new york state i'm spe i specifically got those off of monroe county public health and safety.gov i think that's right mm -hmm. from the website at the bottom it looks like it's prob probably promulgated by the state health department because it doesn't say anything about Monroe County in the website address. Got it. But it is what we have to, when they it's give us, a, yes, you that is the requirements I must follow. Things. 
so that is where I'm at now. It's just trying to figure out what is next. And if you would like to, you can refer back to the original um, request that I put in, and you can just double check and look at those photos again, and you can see that my truck sits very far back behind a fence, away from the public eye. I guarantee you if you go down Summershire, you would not know my truck is there unless you stopped, turned your head, and looked back towards my property. And now my neighbors are like, what's going on? Why don't you have, and I'm like, I'm not sure yet. We're working on it. So I'm here to try and figure out what to do next. And I hope that's keep my truck in my driveway. Okay. Anybody have any questions or comments? I do. Sure. Hi, I'm wondering if you have spoken to other uh, food truck businesses locally and asked them where they are storing their trucks? Absolutely. So for one of those, I spoke to an employee at uh, Le Petit Poutine, and so they collectively use the commissary together. So one person owns it, they all use the commissary, and at this point they're at capacity. And even at that, they don't plug in. They stop, they pull all their stuff out, they put it in a cooler, and that's how it goes. So another one is Waffles Are Wild. She is out of Henrietta, if I'm not mistaken, and she parks in her driveway. I think the rules are different there. Are. Um, also, there is a Caribbean truck downtown uh, right beside the Peppa Pot. He parks in a parking lot adjacent to his um, restaurant, and he takes everything into his restaurant. Most of the people that are in this position, Rob's Kebabs, um, they have a standalone restaurant, um, effortlessly healthy. They have a restaurant as well. They pull up to, they take everything out. But there are a handful of us who are not like that, that are our own commissary. And we park on premises, which is our homes in most cases. I just was unaware that around, when I moved here that Arondequoit was specifically zoned the way it is. And so now I'm trying to figure out how to manage moving forward. But... Yes, I have spoken to some people. It's come up, they kind of gave me a little bit of guidance, but they're like, good luck. So I have spoken to them, but it kind of gave me a brick wall as well. Even though you belong to the wrong service, I want to commend you for, uh, um, well, for the work that you did and the research. And, uh, and I think my, um, um, my original opinion that this is not, <coughs> not gonna be a hardship and that I think she should be allowed to um, keep it at her home where it is and uh, still stands. Any other questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, we'll open it up to the public input portion. Is there anyone here? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. The public input was closed last month. It was not advertised as a public hearing. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Then we're concluded with your case. Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And on that note... We will take a break until uh, quarter up.
look out over the room, I see that the applicant for 489 Rock Beach Road is still here. The applicant for Hudson Avenue left, 850 East Ridge Road is still here, as is 99 Summershire Drive. So, we will take them in that order. The first uh, application for our... Uh, Consideration is the application pertaining to 489 Rock Beach Road. This is a type 2 action for secret purposes. Does anyone wish to make a motion with respect to this application? I'll make a motion on 489 Rock Beach Road that we uh, approve the applicant as applied. Um, I do not believe that it is a substantial variance, all, all three of the variances. Um, I do believe it is a self-created problem because they want to build a new home on an empty lot. But I, I do believe because the lot sizes are extremely uh, small that uh, um, it is not a substantial um, variance. Uh, it is not going to be a detriment to the neighborhood. I think it will help the character of the neighborhood with a, a newer home. And I, looking at the, uh, at the design of the house, it looks like it's going to be a, a, a very good-looking house. Um, it is not going to have any environmental concerns. Uh, I believe at one point there was a house on that property before. Um, <coughs> so again, I don't think there's uh, minimal differences. Um, so being said all that, I think we should approve it. I'll second. <clears throat> any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Seven votes in favor, no opposed, no abstentions. We have one member absent, but we are fully constituted. All right. The next item will be the application pertaining to 1862 Hudson Avenue. This is also a Type 2 action for secret purposes. Does anyone wish to make a motion with respect to this application? Make a motion. Okay. No, go ahead. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion. 1862 Hudson Avenue. Um, that we approve the signage. The get the um, um, knowing that they're taking down the one pole sign, the single pole sign, and they're adding the signage to the canopy and redesign, re, um, redressing the canopy for a better word of, uh, lack of a better word. Um, I think it's more modern. I think it looks good. I don't think the sign is. Uh, uh, going to be a detriment to the neighborhood. It is not going to make any differences as far as environmental uh, concerns are. Um, I don't believe it's a substantial difference. Um, that being said, I think we should approve it. I'll second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Seven votes in favor. No opposed. One abstention, or no abstentions, and one member absent, but we are fully constituted. My apologies to the applicants for 850 East Road, Ridge Road, and Summershire because these are in the, I didn't rearrange the order of the, what, for lack of a better term, would be our verdict sheets. Um, I rearranged the applications. So I apologize for taking the one who left ahead of you. Now we're on 850 East Ridge Road. This is also a Type 2 action for seeker purposes. Does anyone wish to make a motion with respect to this application? <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we approve the application as stated. It is going to be a substantially large sign, but I think what they're trying to create is that environment, like if they're walking on a pier and going into a seafood store. It, I don't think it's going to change the, you know, the neighborhood that much. If you go around... Ridge Road on there, there's a lot of signs on buildings, all different sizes and shapes. Um, alternatives not, not requiring a variance is basically not have a sign or that size. I don't think it's a substantial request, and I don't think it's going to have an effect of physical and environmental conditions of granted. Is it self-created? Yeah, because they're trying to, to create uh, an environment for their restaurant. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. 
I just want to add that the fact that they've taken down the other sign on, that's on the building. On the building, yeah. And that I think it doesn't hurt it at all. It helps the situation. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Seven votes in favor. No opposed, no abstentions. One member is absent, but we are still fully constituted. <coughs> Last item on the agenda. Oops. Is uh, the application pertaining to 99 Summershire Drive. This is a type 2 action for secret purposes. I'll make a motion that we grant the variance as requested. Um based on the following uh, findings. This will not adversely affect the character of the neighborhood as is evidenced by the fact that the truck, uh, when it's parked behind the uh, gate in the back, back of the driveway is barely visible and submitted with the original application was um, a statement that was signed by every single uh, neighbor on both sides and across the street, as I recall, indicating that they were in support of um, the applicant's request, uh, Ms. Rodriguez, to be allowed to park her truck there. The alternatives that do not require a variance, um, as the applicant testified tonight, would uh, require her to close her business and pursue uh, something else, and I, I think that that fact in and of itself constitutes a hardship, uh, which is the standard for an area variance. It is substantial in, in the sense that we have not uh, generally allowed those kinds of vehicles to be parked in driveways or on properties, but the vehicles that we have denied access to uh, in the past were generally owned by uh, third parties and did not have any um, need to be parked uh, close to um, electric and water, as this applicant has testified is, is necessary for her to be able to uh, run her business. And the other, um, the applications that we've denied in the past have generally been uh, because it was more for the convenience of the employer than it was for the uh, applicant and and on that basis we had felt that uh, the town's interest uh, is supersedes the employer's convenience uh, but in this case uh, the employer is the applicant and the request is is a necessity for the applicant to be able to continue to meet the requirements and she made a diligent uh, search of other alternatives and there are no alternatives uh, that um, would not require a variance. Uh, it will not have any adverse physical or environmental conditions if it's granted. It's a self-created situation uh, necessitated by the nature of the applicant's business, the nature of the requirements that other governmental entities have imposed upon her for being able to continue to operate her business in that manner and uh, as such that the fact that it's self-created does not preclude and should not preclude the granting of this application. Uh, I would, however, impose uh, one condition, and that would be that the truck is going to be parked behind the gate, and the gate will be closed uh, when the truck is parked on the premises. Um, that was one of the factors that the applicant indicated was her custom, so it shouldn't create any problem, and I think that Having driven by, if I wasn't looking for it, I don't think we would have seen it. So um, that's my motion. Can we discuss that for a second? Sure, absolutely. It's open to discuss. Well, first we need a second. 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 Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of having the truck there, um, but I do notice that the truck is tucked quite nicely behind the... Uh, back of the house um, if I were to say yes or, or to make the blow a little lighter she does have a nice gate um, she does have a six foot fence around the whole backyard um, 
but if she were to make the gate six foot to uh, hide the truck a little more, um, would that be a problem? Six, isn't the gate six feet now? No, I think the gate is uh, like a four foot gate. And, and then the, the fence, the side fence is six foot, based on the pictures. So the fence that um, contains my property is about a six foot fence. The fence that you would pull into is about about to my chest, so, so it's, it's probably about, about four, four feet. feet. Um, Personally, I think for safety, my kids are back there playing in the yard. I like being able to see if I take my trash out. I personally do not want to put a six-foot gate there. That's more money that could go towards my business, my truck. Like, as I said before, with expenses and putting – go ahead. Would you be willing to put, like, a lattice top, add it to the what's there, and that you'd be able to still see through – when your kids are playing, but it would kind of cover things up, as Mr. LaPerry's pointing out, more from the road? I, I don't mind looking into it at all. Um, would that be something that I would need to come back to you guys and talk about? I, I have no idea what that would take to contact the guy who built the fence and say, hey, can you extend this? Can we figure out something else? I'm not really sure. And I don't really know if what the regulations are if you have something that fans open, is there a point where that you have to be able to see? I'm well, not sure. I would have to ask. As I recall, the pictures that you submitted with the application and what I saw when I went by, the gate at the back of the driveway is located at the rear foundation line of the house. So That's under correct. our uh, ordinance, six feet uh, would be permissible there. Okay. I and, don't mind looking into and it And the, the lattice kind of thing, yeah, as, as Mr. LaPerry points out, you're really – you're going to see maybe the top foot or so of the truck. So a two-foot two foot extension is what you're requesting. Yeah, and you can make it, you know, something that you can still see through um, to keep an eye on your kids in the back when you're taking out trash and that kind of stuff. But you know, Got it. that would, I think, cover it up just a little. It would hide it say better. Cover up, hide it better, yeah. make it less noticeable. Is that all right? I guess it has to be. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a relatively, you'll find, I think, that it should be a relatively minor thing, a few it's pieces of It's better than the alternatives, and, I tell you that. And they, you can get the four foot by eight foot lattice panels at We can Home figure Depot it out. Or Lowe's, yeah. All right. So uh, we'll put with the gate closed and we'll put gate to be extended uh, to six feet. Okay, Tim. I'm I'm not wild about imposing uh, the extension of the of the gate um, as part of the the variance um, or as a condition of the variance. I think with with the lack of complaints or um, you know and the and the overwhelming support from neighbors, um, you know I don't I don't think that we need to impose that on her. How about a recommendation as opposed to a condition? It sounds great. Is that okay? Yeah, I, I probably that would be forthright. I, I don't think I'll vote for it, but I, I, just because of the fact that it's a commercial truck. And Understood. I think, and, and I I've understand been, her dilemma, and I understand the the uh, the problems or whatever. But it's now it's you know I'm just worried it opens up Pandora's box for anybody that wants to have a commercial truck, and I know each. One comes on its own merit, um, but um, I've been spending the last month having that debate myself about what's different about it, and the additional facts that she brought out tonight, I think, clearly distinguish that truck from others that we haven't uh, and, approved. And I, in. I'm sorry to interrupt. And you, I Mr. think Chairman. in the future. Um, this will not create any real precedent unless someone comes in with another truck that they can hide the same way. And, and Mr. Chairman, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly uh, from the last meeting, we can impose the specifics of the type of truck and, again, where it's that, that the gate will be closed and be back there, and this is specifically a food truck of specific dimensions so that in the future, if that house is resold, the, the likelihood of somebody else using a 
whatever, you know, uh, yes, a would, construction vehicle, that's that's out of the question. Right. We've approved a vehicle that requires uh, electric and potable water sources 12 months out of the year and requires that food and other perishables be um, maintained in a uh, appropriate manner under the health code. So it's limited to that kind of a circumstance because that's what the application was that we've we've approved. We have not approved any old any and all kinds of trucks. So. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. And any abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, six votes in favor. One opposed. No abstentions. And one member is absent, and but the board is still fully <coughs> constituted. And then there are two more things before we adjourn. The with the packets, everyone should have received copies of the uh, minutes that were prepared for the meeting on August 5th. Did everyone receive those and have a chance to review them? Yes. Right. Um, one, one small correction to the minutes. Yes. Uh, under the attendance, um, we have the late Russ Thomas listed instead of myself. Yes. He was here in spirit, though. Somebody if it was it. As he is tonight. And the date. Yes. The date. The date at the top of the minutes we we noticed is August fifth, twenty eighteen. Oh, you know, I hadn't even noticed that. All right, so a second small change. With those, uh, you're testing us. Yes, really. With those corrections, uh, I would make a motion that we uh, adopt the minutes as proposed with those two minor corrections. Second. That's all right. Mr. Travis seconds. All those in favor say aye. Well, is there any other discussion? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Ms. Pickett abstains because she was not present last month. Right. I mean, not in this beautiful chair. Right. Yeah, I know you were here, but you weren't part of the meeting, so you're technically not allowed to vote on the minutes. With that being said, um, there's one other item. I was informed at the beginning of the meeting and confirmed on the break that uh, Mr. LaPerry is going to be retiring, retiring from the from our board. And uh, it's been a pleasure serving with you, and, and we appreciate all the years of service that you've given to town, and we wish you nothing but the best, sir. Well, it's been a pleasure serving with the all the board members, the ones that are here currently and the ones that were here. Um, and I wish you all the best to the newbies. And uh, um, and I'm sure I'll see you in the neighborhood because I'm not going anywhere. I'm still living in town. <coughs> all right, good. Uh, but thank you. All Thanks right. For the and that means if uh, you would let the supervisor and the board know that we need to have another member appointed to the board, and we're going to need another alternate, alternate member appointed. So, or at least we may need another alternate depending upon what the town board does. So, but those two things need to be addressed. And with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>